Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today I'm here with the fourth comparison video. If you're out there taking, uh, taking notes and keeping track, this is the fourth comparison video of the White Sox to a team in 2021 that they will play. And this one is going to be about the AL West's Texas Rangers. And we will be playing the Rangers in April. It's funny, the schedule is actually going to be kind of weird this year. We're playing the Rangers, the Angels, and the Mariners all in April. Three Western Division teams were getting the first series against them right out of the way in April. I don't know if that's good. Maybe it is. Actually, given those three teams and how they look, I think it is pretty good for us. For April. So this is the fourth video and we're going to be talking about the Texas Rangers. Now uh, last year as I went over the um, in previous videos and I'm going to go over it again here and I will in every video. The White Sox last year were second in the American League in hitting with a 261 batting average and they were first in the AL in home runs with 96. Now, offensively, if we compare that to the Texas Rangers, who, by the way, finished last in the West last year with a 22 and 38 record, while the White Sox were tied for second, technically, but third, based on record against the Indians, uh, we were tied for second with a with a with 35 wins. So. Um, but the Rangers last year, batting average-wise, were 15th in the American League with a 217 batting average, and they were 12th in the American League in home runs with 62. So their offense was very poor. So that brings us to the White Sox. Let's review what we have for the White Sox going into 2021. As of this recording, of course, that can all change. And, of course, these lineups are not set in stone the rotation isn't set in stone. These are all decisions that Tony LaRusse is going to have to make. Uh, but these were on Roto Champ, so I'm going with these. Haven't been able to get any preview magazines yet, but if anybody's out there and knows that the preview magazines are out, let me know, and I may go and try to find them. Um, but that having been said, this is where we are, so let's go through the lineup. For the White Sox, You've got uh, Tim Anderson leading off at shortstop. He hit 322 last year, and that led the White Sox in batting average. Adam Eaton, the new arrival, although we've had him before a few years ago, um, he is going to expected to be in right field. I personally expect he'll be the right fielder versus um, right-handed pitching, and he'll platoon with Adam Eaton. Uh, I said it again, Adam. Engel. He'll platoon with Adam Engel um, and, uh, and Engel batting and playing right field against uh, lefties. That's what I would think, but maybe you never know. LaRusa may have other ideas. Uh, Nick Madrigal at second base. Yasmani Grandal at catcher. Jose Abreu at first base. And last year, Jose Abreu had 19 home runs, led the American League with 19 home runs in 60 games and had a 370 on base. No, I take that back. He did not lead in home runs in the American League. That was, I believe, uh, Voigt, uh, uh, Luke Voigt of New York. But he did lead the White Sox in home runs with 19 and a 370 on base percentage. Uh, Eloy Jimenez in left field. Now, I expect Jimenez may, he might be the DH, and maybe, um, you know, maybe uh, Lurie Garcia will play left field, who knows, to begin with, and that depends on some other things that I'll get to when I talk about the bench, too. Um, Johan Moncada at third base. Lewis Robert in center field. Last year, Lewis Robert had a... Uh, Pretty vanilla offensive season. He hit some home runs. He hit about 251, but he was stellar in the outfield. He won the gold glove in the outfield in the American League. 
And then uh, Lurie Garcia, as I said, maybe the DH, maybe left field, maybe super utility guy. Depends on what direction Tony La Russa wants to go. The rotation uh, is going to be Lance Lynn, Lucas Giolito, Dallas Keuchel, who had a 199 earned run average for the White Sox last year and led the um, White Sox, Dylan Cease, possibly Michael Kopech. Michael Kopech sat out last year, but we'll see if he decides not to sit out this year. And that's why I listed Ronaldo Lopez as the sixth starter and possibly a swing man between the rotation and the bullpen throughout the year. You know, maybe a long reliever, that type thing. Uh, the bullpen is Liam Hendricks, who we just got. We just signed him to a, uh, I believe it was a, what was it? Four-year deal? Five-year deal? I'm not sure. But anyway, we just got him. Uh, Cody Hewer, Aaron Bummer. Matt Foster. Jimmy Cordero. Jace Fry, lefty out of the bullpen, and Garrett Crotchet, the guy that can throw over 100 miles an hour. And um, on our bench, we've got Adam Engel. And again, I think he will he might platoon with Adam Eaton, but we'll see. Danny Mendick, who is a utility infielder, can play second and short, especially. Andrew Vaughn. Now here's Andrew Vaughn. We'll see what happens with Vaughn because he could actually make the club out of spring training. And if he makes the club, he could um, switch back and forth between first and DH with Jose Abreu, which would put Lurie Garcia out of the lineup and sitting on the bench as a super utility guy when needed, which I think is the best use for Garcia, but we'll see. Um... And then uh, Zach Collins, the backup catcher, Nicky Delmonico, and uh, Micah Rodolfo. So you remember last year we had um, two very good catchers. We had Grandall and we had McCann. And McCann was excellent, and he allowed um, Grandall to rest quite often, or at least not have to play catcher. We don't appear to have that luxury going into this year. That's one of the weaknesses, I think, of this team. I think the bullpen could use another arm in, uh, you know, in relief. Another really quality arm, but we'll see if they can get one. But definitely, if backup catcher Zach Collins is, uh, we, we got to do better than that. Or Grandall's going to have to play almost every game at catcher for 162 games, which is going to be... A serious wear and tear on the man. So I don't know if that's really a doable uh, thing to have Zach Collins going into battle with Zach Collins as your backup catcher. But that's what we appear to have right now. We'll see if they can do better than that. Um, but that's where it is. So anyway, last year, the White Sox were fifth in the American League in ERA with a 381 earned run average. So basically, third in pitch or fifth in pitching in the AL. Now that brings us to the Rangers. As I said, the Rangers were dead last in their division with a 22 and 38 record last year. They were 15th in batting average with a 217 average and they were 12th in homers with only 62. Their lineup projected for 2021 is Leody Tavares in left field, Isaiah Kiner Falefa at short. They've had him for a few years. Willie Calhoun at DH, they've had him for a few years. Joey Gallo in center field, who uh, a couple of years ago looked like he was starting to get his swing into, you know, like he was starting to come into his own batting average-wise and getting on base-wise. But then he regressed a little bit again in the 60-game season last year. So we'll see whether the real Joey Gallo is a guy that can now hit for average. We know he can hit for power. The man is great at hitting for power, but he has struggled to hit for average. And we'll see if he has fixed that or even improved on it or not. Uh, Nick Solak at third base. David Dahl comes over from Colorado, and he'll play right. Ruffnid Odor, 
who always hits, talking about people who hit below average, Ruffnett Odor has, I think, the last two years hit below 200. And one year, I think he hit 151, maybe last year. It might have been last year that he hit 151. So he's a horrible batting average guy. But again, like Gallo, he can hit for power. Nate Lau at first base, and Jose Trevino at catcher. Their rotation uh, lines up as Kyle Gibson, Jordan Lyles, Colby Allard, Kyle Cody, and Dane Dunning. Now, if you uh, think that Dane Dunning is a familiar name to you, it should be. We had him last year. He made a few appearances for the White Sox. And we traded, he was part of the trade, to get Lance Lynn from Texas. So um, he's going to be in a rotation. He's, he should have a good future ahead of him. I think that was a good acquisition. Now, I don't know much about Kyle Cody, and I don't know much about Colby Allard. Uh, Jordan Lyles and Kyle Gibson are, they're, they're middle of the road. They're okay. They're not great. They're not going to be, they're not going to wow you. They're never going to turn into Justin Verlander. But they're okay. Then in their bullpen, you got Jonathan Hernandez, Jose Leclerc, who they've had for a long while, uh, Wesley Benjamin, Jimmy Hurgis, Taylor Hearn, Brett Martin, Jolie Rodriguez, and Justin Anderson. I don't know much about any of these guys. I know Leclerc is good. Leclerc is a good, he's, um, you know, he's an A number one relief pitcher. The rest of these guys, I don't know much of anything about. Um, and then their bench is Elvis Andrus. Or did we already go over that? I don't know. I don't think we did. So, yeah, their bench is Elvis Andrus, Ronald Guzman. And they've had those two for years. I don't know why. Roto Champ is saying that Elvis Andrus would be on their bench and that their shortstop would be Kiner Falefa. I don't know why they would do that. But maybe they will. Um, Anderson Tejada, Charlie Culberson, who was recently with the Braves, Eli White, Drew Butera as their backup catcher. He was in Kansas City, you might remember, at one time. Uh, Sam Huff, not the linebacker for the Giants from the 50s. No, not that one. Uh, and I don't know, he might actually be better than this Sam Huff because I don't know this guy. Rob Refsnyder, who was on the Yankees a couple of years ago, and Jason Martin. So that is the, uh, and in the, uh, the Rangers last year, their pitching staff had a 5.02 earned run average, which was bad. And uh, they, uh, so yeah, that's how they line up. So I like our team really against the Rangers. Their lineup, they've got some guys with power, but they don't hit for average. And that's, I mean, that's obvious. They hit 217 last year. And you've got guys like Ruffnett, Odor, and Gallo who are terrible, notoriously terrible uh, batting average guys. And, um, you know, and the guys on their bench, the guys in their bullpen, I don't know these guys. Dane Dunning was a nice acquisition for him, and Kyle Gibson and Jordan Lyles at the top of their lineup are okay. So that's where we are with that. Um, whereas, you know, our rotation, I, it's pretty solid all the way through, and the bullpen is much better. Uh, the bench, you know, I don't, I think even our bench is better. Our bench really, I think, is even, is, is better, especially if it has Vaughn on it. Um, and if Micker Adolfo can hit for the power that he's projected to hit for. So that's what we got. Um, what do you guys think? You think we're going to beat up on the Rangers? Again, as I've said in a previous video, we need to beat up on the teams that we're supposed to beat up on. And I think the Rangers, by looking at this, the Rangers are one of those teams. We really need to beat up on them. And I think we will. And... Um, they, uh, and yeah, we match up in every category. We match up better with them. E you know, even even where we're weak at like backup catcher, Drew Butera is their backup catcher and their starter is Jose Trevino. So even where we're weak, we're still probably at worst 
as good. So that's what I got. I think we're going to we're going to school the Rangers I think this year. There's going to be other videos with teams where I'm going to say we we might be in a little bit of trouble, but this is not one of them. The Rangers are not one of them. And uh, so, yeah, this was the fourth in the series. Make sure to go back and watch the other ones. I will link to um, one of the other ones in the uh, end card at the end of the video. And I will also, and actually I'll link to two of them because last year I did this series and I didn't do the Rangers. I didn't get to the Rangers because um, by the time I was about to get to the point where I was going to do the Rangers preview or us versus the Rangers, it became apparent that we weren't going to play the Rangers. So, and that happened with a few teams. So I did not get to them last year. Um, but that's what it looks like this year. And it would have looked much like this even last year, I think. So what do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Give me a thumbs up. Um, let me know if you see the magazines are out and I'll go get one. I also have to go get baseball prospectus. I get that every year. Going to love that. But anyway, that is, I'm getting off track. That's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.